Pikes Peak. When we think of Pikes Peak, we often think of it as a wonderful tourist destination in the Rockies of North America. But when I think of Pikes Peak, I can picture myself standing there looking up at the 14,000-foot summit and realizing that I came there for a purpose. I came there to break a record. You see, Pikes Peak has one of the highest roads in the world. Because of this, it is the host to the oldest race that automobiles go up in the United States. For a hundred years, people have risked their lives to go up the mountain to set a record with a purpose. In 2002, I was one of the competitors. I was there not for the experience, not for the view from the top. I was there to win. I was there to set a record and to be able to establish my name in history as being a winner of the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. There was something that came about at Pikes Peak that I never expected. In 1999, I showed up actually a little bit more for the experience. I was 18 years old, I had just graduated college, and I decided I wanted to go automobile racing. So I built a car, I went to Pikes Peak, and we had a wonderful result. I ended up being Rookie of the Year. But I did learn something very valuable that year, and that is the fact that in some places of life, technology rapidly progresses, but in other places, it lags behind. You see, the battery that was used in my car in 1999 was one that was required by the racing organizers. It was one that weighed more than a stock battery in a car. That bothered me. Everything in the car I tried to make as light as possible because I was going to climb a hill, climb a mountain to the top. The battery, to me, was a problem. I couldn't understand it. So, during the course of 1999 through 2001, I was on a mission because I realized that the battery that's in a race car didn't have to do the same job that the battery in your streetcar did. It had a sole purpose, to start the car to win the race. So I got together with a group of engineers and we developed a solution, a winning solution, something that took the battery and completely changed the way people viewed it. We went from a 41-pound battery, a lead weight, to an 11-pound performance battery that helped me win the race in 2002. From 2002 all the way through the next 10 years of my life, my life changed, and I changed the way that people look at batteries. For me, a battery was not just something that you thought about when it failed. No, a battery needed to be something that you actually wanted. Something that you wanted because it was better than everything else in the world. Our company, which is called Braille Battery that I established in 2002, was the company that brought a change to the battery industry. In 2007, we were the first company to ever release a lithium-ion battery for starting vehicles. We were the first company to do carbon fiber batteries. The first company to actually win in the same year races in Formula One, NASCAR, Grand Dam and American Le Mans, all out of a company that was built around passion. Because of this, because of these achievements, we had a great opportunity. The opportunity came to us in 2011. You see, our customers chose us based upon performance, but this was a unique opportunity. See, IndyCar chose us because they wanted us to build a battery because nobody else could do it. Nobody could do it because suddenly this new age Delara chassis that they had wanted to have more power in a smaller space than anything that had happened before. So we worked hard to develop this battery. It took us a year and a half of develop development and the result of it I'm actually quite proud of. This is the battery for an Indy car. Every single battery in every single Indy car that races in every single race it's in the palm of your hand. To me, this is a change of technology. This is a change of thinking as to how big a battery has to be, what you have to carry around. So in developing this battery, this to me was like winning Pike's Peak because this was like reaching the summit. But it doesn't mean that we stop. Because at Pike's Peak, if somebody asked me, wow, you just won this year, what do you do next? Well, obviously you want to break your own record. So for me, this was something that I looked at it and said, I want to share this moment, this 
win with all my friends. So guess what? I decided, like most of us, to reach for my phone. And I decided I was going to take some photos and take some videos and share it with everybody. But my battery was dead. <laughs> so here I was. I've got this battery that we designed that can withstand a crash of a wall at 230 miles an hour. It's designed to last for years in an Indy car. It can handle anything you throw at it. And yet, I can't even call home. <laughs> so for me, it really got me thinking. And it made me realize, am I the only one with this problem? And ultimately, to me, it led to a concept of connection anxiety. I think we're all facing this. <laughs> we have it to where suddenly, because of what we want to do, we want to connect with other people. We want to be able to share our experiences, capture those experiences, as well as to be able to use our phones as a way to give freedom. But yet we have connection anxiety. So I wanted to know why was this happening. Just like Pikes Peak, back when, in 1999, I looked at the battery differently, I suddenly started looking at the problem differently. The problem was not the battery that was in the phone. It was the way that we charged it. It wasn't trying to make a better battery for a mobile device. It was about making a better charging device. Because if suddenly we could allow the engineers that design the mobile devices to do what they do best within their space, but we introduce a completely new concept, maybe we could do something different. We'll get back to that. So to me, when I looked at mobile phones, I thought about there's a lot of performance in those things. And we are living today in the muscle car era of mobile devices. To me, we are on the edge of a battery fuel crisis. The reason? Because we want speed. We want those features. We want the ability to do more with what we take with us. It just makes sense. But when we look at a Hemi V8 versus a four-cylinder motor, What's very interesting is that as we look at cars in time, the muscle cars gave us all the speed we could desire, but it left us wanting for a gas station. Suddenly, something happened, and that was the real fuel crisis. It changed the way we looked at cars. Over time, it's very exciting because now today, we suddenly have a car that can get 40 miles per gallon and still accelerate and or outperform a muscle car from the 60s that only got four to eight miles per gallon. So we've progressed technology in the automobile space. What's going to happen in the mobile space? What I am proposing and what I thought about is that as I tried to identify the problem is that we don't even know what the problem is. We can't even wrap our heads around the concept of what it can or cannot do. We just know that we're not happy when it doesn't. With cars, we go make purchases where we sit there and look at the entire list of what the features are, and right next to it are these two numbers, city and highway miles per gallon. And it allows us to make a choice. When we go and buy our mobile devices, sometimes we get a little bit of information, but there's not a standard. So I'm proposing a change, and it's something that helped me understand where the problem was, and that is we should use a term called MPC, minutes per charge. How neat would it be if we suddenly had a way to identify what we could do with our devices? Here I am, I fully charged my phone. Now I've got 100 minutes per charge. Okay, now I'm gonna download this app and I'm gonna run this app. Ooh, that takes away 20 minutes per charge. I'm gonna download another app. That's another 20 minutes. Download another app. 20 minutes, suddenly I have connection anxiety. <laughs> hmm. We need to know what these changes to our devices do. When talking with the top app developers in the world over the last year, whenever we ask them about all of their credibility and design etiquettes, they would come back to us with lots of great stories. But then when we asked them, well, how much battery does it consume? The answer was, well, that's interesting. Nobody's asked that before. So there's a problem. <laughs> we have to get people to identify and to be able to quantify what's happening. 
To me, this leads to mobile freedom. That's the reason that we buy these mobile devices in the first place. Really, our tablets, our phones, they replaced items that we already had. We had a phone at home, we had a PC at home. So what's the point of everything that we have? It's because it's mobile. Without the mobility, we don't have the freedom. And we want that freedom, don't we? It's why we live here. It's why we have the choices that we make. If we don't have the power to be able to give ourselves that true mobility, we don't have true freedom. So as I looked back at the problem that I had with my dead phone, and I looked at the fact that here I was, somebody who ended up having a huge passion for batteries, I realized that something different needs to happen. Something that took the power of what this IndyCar battery had and took the durability that we had designed into it and apply it for a mobile device. To me, this is the solution. This is a device that is a rapid charger for any mobile product that you have. This is not just an emergency backup plan. No, this is a new way of living. This is a new way to have freedom to charge when you want and where you want. This is the ability to have something that's thought about just like we did the IndyCar battery where somebody said, you've got this much space, what can you do with it? Well, guess what? This is the size of your pocket. This fits in a cup holder. To me, this is the way to power our future. This is the way to suddenly advance what we're doing as a society. What we need to do is we need to ask for more solutions like this. We need to ask for developers to be able to think more efficiently. Give us the speed we want, but give us the MPC that we deserve. Help us truly have mobile freedom so that we have the power of choice to overcome the battery fuel crisis that we're facing today.